All right, oh, we're geez. recording. Really powerful. Yeah. We're recording. Okay. Uh, good evening and welcome to the January 4th, uh, 2004 uh, school board meeting. Uh, before we do the pledge, I do want to say that we have uh, have to make a change to our, um, our agenda. Uh, we have an executive session uh, at the end scheduled at the end uh, scheduled for the end of the meeting uh, it is uh, MRS a 40560 labor contract negotiations and we need to uh, we're going to change that to have an exec, exec, executive session uh, around the duties of officials and appointees and shall we start with the pledge of allegiance Flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we start with a public input statement that is read by our, boy, our vice chair, but she's not here. Do we have someone that would like to read that? If, do you have it or do you need it? I don't have it. Actually, Travis, if you want to do it. Before. Okay. Uh, it's this and this. Uh, the first public input session is a 21-minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in, it in which to make a statement. But the second public input, but a second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. The speaker will give his or her name, address, and reason for speaking. Public input is designated for district residents, but the board chair may grant non-residents the opportunity to address the board statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding the executive session. For example, matters involving personnel cannot be made during public input. A statement of respect. We as a community pledge to treat each other as we wish to be treated. We pledge to seek understanding when there may be a disagreement. Regardless of the outcome or opinions, we pledge to move forward with respect. This is a time for comments as opposed to questions. Thank you. And before we proceed with public input, I have something I would like to add. We certainly welcome your input and your willingness to share your thoughts. Uh, I've been looking over the board policies and it states public input is designated for issues and not personalized. There have been issues that have bordered on being personalized and the discussion has provided information that makes students and staff identifiable, and that's not acceptable. Um, there is a protocol for addressing more personal issues, and that starts at the point of contact. So if it's a building issue, you start with the building. If it's a transportation issue, you'd start there and then work up the to the chain of command. And I know that at some meetings, uh, when people have had more personalized issues, uh, Sue or Audra has jumped in and said, hey, this is what we can do, or come talk to me in private, and that's certainly something that uh, that we can do. So, uh, public input. Am I? Yes. I'm going to pull this down so you can hear me. Um, my name is Emily Drummond. I am a Berwick resident, um, and I have children in this school district. What other information do you need from me before I proceed? That's it. That's it. <laughs> um, so my comment, I suppose, might slightly more on personal but I would like to say before I start that it is more of a community matter, and that is what I am here addressing. So if at any point you feel as though it has gotten too personal, please let me know, okay? Um, I'd like to start if that's okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I debated on coming here this evening and speaking in front of you. However, I can no longer be silent, even if my voice shakes. So I apologize because I am not a public speaker. I am here to speak about the racism that is going on in the middle school. Um, personally, I have a child who has been racially targeted more than eight times this year alone. I have been to the middle school numerous times this year already to pick up my child who has been called racial slur after racial slur after racial slur, time and time again. 
My child is now at the point to where he struggles with being in the building due to the racism and the racist microaggressions going on in the building. The situation has become severe enough that it is now affecting my child's ability to participate and benefit from their education. The legal right to be free from racist discrimination in school is guaranteed by federal law, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. I would like to make you aware that discrimination can also be interpersonal, such as slurs, stereotypes, racist jokes. It can also include systemic practices that don't give black and brown students equal opportunities to succeed. <clears throat> According to the U.S. Department of Education, Education, racism in school disproportionately hits black and brown students who account for 15.1% of the national K-12 students, but make up 37% of racial harassment targets. 30, research, 30 seconds. Research from the U.S. Government Accountability Office shows that race is the leading identifying factor for hate-related um, words commonly targeted in school. So now I'll ask the board, what are the district's policies around incidents of racial bias and discrimination? What is the district's racial equity and inclusion mission? What steps are being taken to be sure that the district and the school board and committees are living up to their values? As a parent, I am here to speak out on my child's behalf, but as a human, I am here asking for accountability for every black and brown child in the building. Thank you. If you have questions for me, I think most of you know where to find me. Thank you. We have other public input. My name is Robert Travers. I am from Lebanon. Um, just something that came to my mind a few minutes ago. Um, so before the session began, the chair made a note about moving a, an agenda item from one place to another. I don't know what the board policy is or what the um, main school administration or administration guidelines say on this. But usually when an agenda is set, a item can only be moved from one spot to another by a two thirds vote. Now, maybe I didn't see this vote, but just, I just wanted to make you aware. Thank you. And maybe I wasn't clear. It's not that it's being moved. Our executive session, the topic has changed. That's okay. But that's executive session after the meeting is over. Okay. Okay. Thank you for putting that up. And I'm not told to can vote. We don't need Yeah. Nobody. Yes. 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 Other public input. Good evening. Mike Barker, uh, North Berwick resident. Um, I had emailed the representatives from North Berwick, being that I live in North Berwick. Um, and really, it's just a it's a statement and an, an input that the board should really take under consideration revolving some past discussions, especially revolving the school resource officer position for Lebanon. Um, first of all, school resource officers are very important. We have two great ones in the district from Berwick and from North Berwick. But a lot of the discussion does revolve around what that is going to do to the budget. And the bigger discussion that the board needs to have is with the town of Lebanon about having a police department or a contract deputy before the school contracts a deputy basically for Lebanon. We don't have school resource officers in the elementary school in North Berwick. We don't have one dedicated to the Hussey School. We don't have them dedicated to the Dalton School or to the Herd School. Understand that response time is of the essence but the two towns that provide a police department for their community and for their schools get that benefit. And I know there is a cost share with that, with the towns of Berwick and North Berwick to be able to provide that to the school. But it's almost like we're gonna extend the school budget 
that's going to affect all three towns and the budgets for all three towns to provide one school with the school resource officer, which again is important, but if Lebanon had either a contract deputy or had a police department, they would be able to serve the school the same way as North Berwick and Berwick do with their other officers, not with the dedicated school resource officer for every little issue or everything that comes up and they get that mentoring and they get that. So I would urge the board before they try to enter into any budgetary decisions and the people of Lebanon really need to speak up though too to their elected officials and say, we need a police department. Um, you know, we don't we don't have those dedicated school resource officers in those other in the, in the other towns that are dedicated, the high school and the middle school, those age children that, you know, benefit the most out of it, I would say, from a lot of research for what what goes on. But if we're just really complaining about or, you know, disgruntled about what the response is when an officer is needed, that's the discussion that really needs to happen first before the school. Uh, and the school budget enters into a contract for a deputy. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public input? Yeah, Mark. Uh, the school resource system with the budget. Janet Mills made an announcement that she has over $276 million. I made a statement before. Instead of reaching out to our pockets, you need to reach out to hers. You need to contact her office and say, hey, we're having a problem. You need to contact the main state board of education. Tell them, hey, we need money to take and secure our schools. There's another school shooting in, out there today, if you haven't all realized that. Uh, and they need to be, the schools need to be secure. Whether we get an officer in Lebanon, whether we get volunteers, I think the idea of uh, veterans volunteering and being trained to fill the positions, they have to be trained. Uh, Again, what value to put on the kids' heads? And you can't take and keep bleeding your uh, your your towns dry. You have to stand up and go up to Augusta and go get the funds. Okay. <laughs> Other public input? Okay. Uh, let's move on to the minutes of the December twenty first meeting. One comment is that we there isn't much about um, everything that Tiffany Roberts provided us with. A lot of information. That? I, I did as much as I could. I know. It just made it, it sort of flopped it. Mm -hmm. There was quite a bit about what Tom said, but there's nothing really about. I, th I just think she talked a lot about looking at grants and other opportunities at state level. I can go back and listen again. The conversation right. we're having about finding money for. Because I actually felt like I didn't put much in about either Mr. Levine or Mr. Adams, honestly, because they. Right. Yeah. No, it was, I, I had to capture the other information. She did talk about yeah. looking for money at the state level for some of yeah. we'd like to talk to Michael. I'll review again. Thank you. Do I rec make a recommendation that we table? Yeah. Move. Minutes. Second. All in favor? Okay. Adult education is next on the agenda. Okay. So we have Nicole, <laughs> is our director of adult ed, also our assistant principal at Noble High School. Yes, good evening. Thanks for having me. As Otter said, my name is Nicole Ivey. I'm the assistant um, principal here at Noble High School, predominantly working with grades nine and 10. So many of you know me in that capacity. Um, I've also, for the last four years, had the privilege of serving as the adult education director. Um, and so that's the capacity that I'll be speaking with you tonight. Um, so in adult education, we develop human capital. We invest in people who then invest in themselves. 
invest in our communities and businesses through employment and fiscal contribution. We're developing a ready workforce alongside meaningful opportunities for participation in society. High school graduates are more likely to be employed and make a higher taxable income and more likely to aid in job generation. They're more likely to vote. High school graduates are less likely to need public assistance to become incarcerated or to require social services. Positive outcomes over the course of a lifetime are greater for those who have achieved their high school credential. And in the spirit of community wellness, one of us does well, we all do well. We know that education is not part of everyone's value system and a low commitment to school is often a component that is deeply embedded within family fabrics. If we can engage parents to think about and pursue their own education, our hope is that we will see the results with our K-12 students, specifically with regard to reductions in chronic absenteeism, disciplinary referrals, um, and school withdrawal overall. A primary focus for us in adult education is student retention and growth. Our staff works diligently to reduce barriers for students to include access to transportation, remote learning options, and more. We also connect students with supports that are necessary to the success in the classroom. In that vein, we also work closely with our high school um, administration, including myself. So sort of a dual capacity there um, to create a stronger continuum between the high school and educa um, adult education for students who are not always successful at Noble High School. Together, we identify students who have officially withdrawn and of those students who goes on to attend Noble Adult and Community Education, who become disconnected and who we can contact to bring back into our home. Our student involvement and success with us in adult education is not reflected in Noble's graduation rate. We want all of our kids to succeed. In addition to high school credential and college transition programs, we also offer workforce development programming as well as daytime and evening MLL classes, which more generally was known previously as ELL, English language learners, now multiple language learners. We have a strong community of learners um, who contribute so much to our student body and to our community as well. Lastly, our enrichment program is thriving. Um, we have an enrichment coordinator who works very diligently within our community to keep a pulse on community interests and sort of what, what classes will be the most marketable, what people are wanting to participate in. Those range from knitting to fitness classes, cooking, sort of everything in between. We have a very seasoned staff at Noble Adult Ed. Um, they're really the heart of our program. The work that they do every day in the classroom has the power to change the trajectory of a person's life. And for many, it changes the tra trajectory of their children's lives as well. Adult learners come to us because they have experienced strife, hardship, trauma. Often there's a reason why it didn't work out the first time. And they trust us to lay on. And our staff, quite simply, really is the light. And they ignite confidence, motivation, and passion with our students. That's kind of the overall um, sort of macro level view. Um, are there any questions so far? No. But how many students do you have enrolled right now? Yeah, so let me I hold up some data from the past few years. So um, as of December 1st, we have 16 students enrolled in our high set programming, except the high school equivalency test. So formerly it was known as the GED. Some states still offer the GED. We do the high set in Maine. Um, so we have 16 students doing that, three students completing their noble high school diploma. Um, so they're working toward create, um, finishing up their credits to um, achieve their diploma. We have 11 students involved in um, transitions, which really is like workforce transitioning um, or college transitioning. And then we have 23 students um, engaged in our MLL program. Thank you. And what about the um, enrichment program? Enrichment we have, sorry, that was another. Um, so I don't have sort, sort of year to date, we have approximately 350, um, but last year our total was 900. The year before was 894. The year before was 800. So around, you know, eight or 900 per year for enrichment. Yeah. Is that individual people, or is that number of like is that is that 900 individual people? Thank you. Um, and something to note about the enrichment program is it works sort of budgetary wise, much like the school nutrition. Um, program works so that the enrichment program really pays for itself. So what we take in in revenue for registration fees goes to pay our instructors. And so that wouldn't be part of the consideration when we look at the adult education budget in the coming weeks. Yeah. Right. Thank you. 
Thank you. Any other questions? No, just a comment of last year at graduation. Like it was just the sweetest thing to see that like there was a little boy that like was ran up to his dad like in the middle of the thing and it was just the cutest thing. And then I can't say enough about the enrichment side of things. My mom is knitting and has been knitting for, I don't know, two years probably now. And she raves about the staff and everyone and the instructors and everyone who's involved. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. Uh, and next on the agenda is project potential on sure. discussion. Yep. So for the next couple of meetings, this meeting and our next meeting, we are just talking as we're looking at the budget. And that's partly why we asked um, Nicole to come in to talk about adult ed, because when we were doing our building tours, adult ed is here. Um, but we really didn't um, have Nicole in at that time to talk about it. So we felt like we wanted to provide that opportunity. So for this meeting, moving ahead to this now topic of project potential, and then the, our next board meeting when we're talking about um, another potential project, we wanted to have Denise here to talk through some of the history of what the district has done as far as financing options, but also have more of a, a global discussion with you about we have some longer term big projects that um, likely won't be able to be supported in the budget because of the cost. And how do we want to look at some of this? And this is really applicable as far as timing goes, because we're, we're, you know, we've been working through the budget and getting all of the information and all the costs as we can. And we're, you know, trying to wrap things up, but we need, these are some of our, these are some of our lingering questions because they are such big projects. So I'm going to have Denise just start by talking a little bit about financing options just in general and some of that history, and then we can go into some of the things that we are looking at specifically right now. And like I said, next board meeting, we'll also talk about um, some other kind of project type things. You can pass those, the extras right out. Extras. Okay. Yep. Pass them right out. Yeah, you can send them out. Sure. Informational. So the packet that you have just received, I was trying to define some of the financing uh, options that are available to us as we prepare the projects. And um, I'm just going to go down them. They're in no particular order. Um, the state offers major capital school construction and renovations money. This is a process that's an application done by the school district. The state opens up this application project process. It's been every seven or eight years. Um, so they had one in fiscal 2010-11. I think they, they did one in, in 2017-18. Um, and what they do is this is for any new school construction or major renovations like we had proposed additions to buildings um, in a previous year. Um, they of the last of the 2017 18 approvals, 78 school buildings were on the list as approved and rated by their rating system. Seven projects were selected, and I think only two or three have made it through any kind of process, and they are still not built. So, in addition to being seven or eight years lead up to the funding or to the approval process, there's another five to 10 years where they are going through the last part of the process in building. So it's really almost a 20 year process to get a building produced. We were lucky enough to have this building approved um, and I think it was 99 and it was completed in 2001. Um, but anyway, that, that is the state's vehicle for building new buildings and providing additions money for additions. The next uh, state program is school revolving renovation funds, SRRF. We have taken advantage of some of these and we are in the process of applying for more. Um, these are state approved school building projects, not paving, not anything outside, but building specific. They, it used to be 600,000 per school per priority. They've raised it recently to 1.2 million. So over the course of five years, each school 
can have 1.2 million worth of project. <laughs> if approved, um, there are five levels of priorities. So the funding right now only applies to priority one. They can't approve all the priority ones they have. Um, so they're not even considering priorities two through five right now. Um, but priority one is for health, safety, and compliance issues. The state would forgive a percentage of the cost of the project and the district would pay the rest at zero interest. Um, the amount we receive in state subsidy five that forgiveness. So I think we have about 57% uh, state subsidy and they would forgive 50%, 57% of the project. The rest would be spread out over a certain number of years. Okay, so those are two state level um, financing options. We have lease purchase agreements. Those are agreements that we're more used to seeing in the school district. Those are where we would negotiate with the bank. Um, we did a technology lease earlier. We did copier leases. We finance our buses, those sorts of things. They're generally for tangible items. You can't finance through a lease purchase agreement any paving or um, those roofing because there's nothing for them to repossess if we default. So basically it's like a traditional financing. Uh -huh. um, the main municipal bond bank, that is a, I'm not sure if it's a, a state program. I believe it's affiliated with the state, but I'm not exactly sure of the structure. And what they do is they organize group bond proposals. So um, school districts and municipalities submit projects to them. Um, the projects have to be school board approved, voter approved, and then you have to apply to the bond bank for approval for financing. Um, there's no limit on the amount that can be borrowed. They have a spring and a fall bond issue each year. Um, Again, I've been speaking with the bond bank recently, 3.75 to 4.4% was the interest rate last fall. So it's not a not a very high interest rate when you borrow. And that basically what they do is they group all the requests together and try to leverage the amount of borrowing. They sometimes are able to come back and refinance those and save us some money on interest. We've done that in the past. But that's a, it's um you have to go with your referendum on that. And then we have our annual budget expenses. Those are projects that we just put into the budget and pay for us with our district budget dollars. Traditionally, we have done rooms. We've, we've done pretty much all of our maintenance projects. Because we've tried to do that, um, not borrowing, putting through, and what we can afford to do. So that's kind of a little of the, um, those are our options that you read us. A little bit of the history. When I started, we we used lots of lease purchase agreements. We lease purchased pretty much everything, furniture and and anything that was able to be financed, we financed. Um, as we went through time, we tried to stop using that vehicle so much and really start putting it into the budget so we could pay for each year and not hold future budgets to to task with these dollars already spent. Um, but what kind of what we've been seeing and I've seen through my years is that we're, our budget varies because we use what we have left over from the prior year to finance what we're going to do in the coming year. It's good to use that money, but what it does is if we have $200,000 to spend, we try to figure out $200,000 worth of projects. If we have a 1.2 million, we try to use 1.2 million. But it means that some projects keep getting kicked down the road. And um, I don't know if you want to take pass out that other sheet. Sure. Yeah. So here's um, here's some of the ones that we're actually needing to consider going forward. Um, hopefully I have enough there for everybody. So we, these are just a bunch of, of projects that have been, um, usually they, are, they live on our CIP list, our mm. capital improvement list. Um, some of them have come and gone um, as they've been a priority or not. Um, for example, 
We have paving projects at Noble High School, the transportation lot at MHA, totaling $560,000 that we need to have done at some point. We have a roof at the Hanson School for $250,000. We have window replacements across the district for $1.3 million. We have playgrounds. The elementary playgrounds need our help. They're probably in the two to $300,000 each range. We have um, the parking project at the Hussey School, which is going to be probably over half a million dollars. And we have other HVAC projects. Those are the SRRF projects where we did that. Um, we did that application we spoke about in last fall. We submitted it to the state for the SRRF, and it's a continuation of our HVAC project that we had started. Um, and if those are approved and they forgive our 57%, it will cost us approximately 4.1 million if we go forward with all, if all the projects are approved, all of that. So we have these big ticket items, and I don't see how we could get them into a regular budget cycle. When, when you know, when we see um, the $45 million budget, are we going to add 4.1 million? Are we going to add 560,000? And so what we're really looking to, to open the discussion about is how do we want to go forward and try to figure out how to finance these things? These are things that can go indefinitely. Um, you know, our playgrounds need to be accessible for kids. They need to be safe for kids. Um, ADA compliant, there, there are issues there. Um, paving, roof. I have some questions about the playgrounds. Is that okay? Not quite. No. Okay. <laughs> Emily, yeah. Emily, I'll catch up with you afterwards, yeah. though. Okay. Um, so, you know, this doesn't speak to fundraising. This doesn't speak to other things, but it just speaks to, as I'm preparing the fiscal 25 budget, I don't only have my eye on that budget, I have my eye on these things and trying to figure out what vehicles you are amenable to, to try to get these projects done. Um, I don't know if you have any questions about the vehicles. I don't know if it's a, we should, I don't know how to go forward, I guess. I just wanted to um, at least break the topic so that we can start. You want to look at the amortization schedule behind it? Yeah. Oh, I forgot about those. Yeah. Those are fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, so attached to that financing options packet, all I did was I went to the main bond bank, which again is the one that has to go through board approval, voter approval, um, and then the main bond bank approval. And I printed out amortization schedules that are for 5, 10, 15, and 20-year increments for $100,000 worth of projects. So, for example, if you go to the 15-year project, 15 years ago, I have written down there, those would likely be paving playground equipment projects. And so you can see for $8,700 a year per $100,000, that's what a bond cost would be for us, given current interest rates, you know, all the qualifications we need to put in there. but. Um, so if something costs, if a playground costs $200,000, that means we're going to have $17,400 of bond repayment over 15 years. Um, again, just kind of give you some, when you look at this list of projects, what we could maybe, maybe do and how we could spread that out. This is super helpful. Okay. Do you have any information on our current bond or our obligations? What are our current debt service ob uh, obligations that we have? Okay, so our current debt service, well, I, I don't have the exact number, but... Right at some time, you don't, I, I'm not, I don't want to... Yes, no, we have, that. We, have um, we have bond obligations from 2009, 10, 11, to the, approximately 68 $67,000 a year, and those finish up in fiscal 25, 26, and 27, I think. So it might go down to 40 and then 20, something in that line. Um, we have the seven, 
um, formerly $73,000. It's $68,000 a year now for the first SRRF projects we did. Those were the sprinklers at Hussey, North Berwick, and Hanson, and the asbestos abatement at Noble Middle. And that's $68,000 a year. Uh, we just started paying on that over 10 years, so I think there's nine years left. We have the bond that was approved, um, I don't know my years anymore, two years ago, and for all the HVAC work that was done in, in the multitude of buildings. And I'm not remembering that bond amount. It hasn't hit the budget. It's going to hit the budget in 25, but I don't have that number off the top of my head. But I can get that for you. Is, is there a... In your training as a business administrator, I know they um, they give uh, healthy percentages of your budget, right? So, is there a, is there a healthy percentage of a, that's recommended um, for bond allocations within a budget? Um, and where are we in relation to that percentage? And again, if you don't have the information tonight, it's something to think about. Um, and just all debt allocation in regards to our as a percentage of our current budget, something along those lines would be helpful. I can get back to you on that. And I also, um, there's also some talk out there, though it's not um, universal how people do it. I belong to the International School Business Officer Association, but it's the nationwide group. And they, um, states do it very differently. Debt, um, you know, you have some states that handle everything at the state level and push it down and they deal with all the financing for all the districts and all of that. And there are different things, but they also um, have some recommendations on the amount you spend on maintenance and facilities. Sometimes it's per square foot. Sometimes, you know, there are things. Let me dig a little bit into that for you. Thank you. And just because it's part of the same conversation, mm -hmm. um, our, our reserve funds, what are those? What are the percentages of those? And, and do we, we have general plans about that? It's just because I see them as a similar conversation. And I'll, I'll come prepared to talk more liberally about that. Previously, prior to COVID, we were allowed only 3% of our budget um, as a savings to that. During COVID, they bumped it, I think, as high as 9%. And I think it had come back down to 6 But I will look at the, um, the current regulations because they have changed year by year. It's just very informative going into budget season, like seeing, talking about this last year, but not knowing all this. This is definitely helpful. Thank you. So at our next meeting, we're having Don Bresnahan come in, and he's going to talk about some of the SRRF projects. And then our charge then is to have a conversation about, you know, thinking about what Denise just presented, thinking about these projects, and we can get you more information on those. Um, and then the presentation, the you know, at the following meeting, talking, giving us direction as to how to proceed uh, with some of these projects or the one that Dawn's going to talk about, just so we're able to then complete our budget process. Okay. And we'll talk about what we think the priorities are yeah. and as opposed to whether or not you feel that those are the same priorities, and we can talk that through as well. But those are all on the radar for what we need to be looking at going forward. And not necessarily for fiscal 25. No, right, no, like right. <laughs> long term. Right. Thank you, Denise. Yeah, thanks. thanks. Thank you. Thank you. That's a lot of information there. Thank you. Uh, next is employment. We don't have any employment updates at this time. Superintendent update. Sure. So the first thing just to um, have on the radar is we are looking to have a board workshop on January 18th, which is our next meeting. Um, with a start time of 545, and that is just a similar workshop that we had this summer. But as we're heading into budget season, we talked about having um, Drummond and Woodson come back in and talking through, you know, some of the roles of the board through the budget process and everything like that. So, again, that's a 545 start. Hopefully that will work. Um, and once that's confirmed, we will let you all know. So just hold that as a, a maybe for right now, but I didn't want to give you short notice. 18th, am I correct? Yes. January 18th, 
going to talk about the test. So passing out, and you can, I think there might be a few extra there. Um, we are working, there's a group at the high school um, that are working towards encouraging um, community employers to come in and have a breakfast a conversation about um, what are what are employers looking for in the, um, their new workers coming in the door. Um, so basically skills, assets, academics that they need, that kind of thing. We're hoping that we can get, um, we've got about, at this point, 19 or 20 local employers coming in to chat. And then also um, we're kind of pushing it out a little bit so and get a wider group in. But just to talk about um, sort of collaborating on a business level, what are they looking for in the noble grad? What kind of a student um, would be a great intern for them in their programs? Just, just it's it's a it's a wide sweep right now, and we're going to bring folks in and talk about like what's um, what do they need from us as a school system, and how can we partner to to improve. Um, the quality of the employees going out into the workforce. So that's happening on January 24th in the morning. So I just wanted you to all know about it. Um, and so we invited to the, to go our, yes, you are invited. So if you want to come, you need to just let me know. Okay, great. There's actually a QR code on here that you can um, RSVP to me. Um, and that's, that's, I think, going to be super it's, it's hopefully the beginning of a conversation. It kind of correlates to the community forums that we just started. Oh gosh, when was it in our, November, October? Where we were talking about some of the bigger issues in, um, in our communities in terms of like what our, what our police departments are seeing and the struggles that sometimes we're having in terms of adolescence. And so the, if this is sort of that more employee focused end of it or employer focused end of it. Um, just trying to continually get out there. Just Apsis, um, Estacchio, and um, Will, Liam Denahar and uh, Marley are really heading it up, and they're just asked, they asked me to step in with it. So, yeah, I believe that they sent out an email. Mm -hmm. Sounded too. Yep. Perfect. I don't know if he's still here. I don't see him. Estacchio is back there. there. Okay. Oh, he's, he's just on <laughs> Making sure he can hear me. That one. <laughs> Yeah, so it's all it's all positive, and I, I'm hopeful that as many of you guys can come as possible. What kinds of employers are you seeing response from? So uh, most of the bigs are coming, Huzzy Seating, Pratt, but we're also reaching out to just small business folks as well. Um, so it currently, Stucky, do you have a list? You don't remember off the top of your head the list we were talking about this morning? I right now, but yeah. I sent you so far. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So, Thank you. You know, we've reached out. There's a there's a variety of of a wide range, I guess, in terms of like small to medium to larger businesses that are that are responding. So it's good. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Sounds good. Sure. <laughs> uh, next is other. We just we, no no that was other. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Well, no, oh, no no we have another. Oh, we have another. <laughs> <laughs> we have another. Mm, another. Superintendent no. update. Uh, okay. Just we, we've had a couple questions about microphones in the audience. We wanted to talk to the board about that because we do have some additional information. So the library has a very high ceiling, as we know. So um, acoustics can be challenging. So Astagio has been working really hard. Like we have more microphones here that feed into the um, recordings so that the recordings, when they're watched on YouTube, they're uh, more clear than what they have been in the past. Uh, we've been working a little bit on trying to get the sound better in here. Um, and so we've priced out some different kind of systems. And we need like speakers as well as microphones. And those are running about $4,000 to equip us for that. We've looked at some other spaces as well. One being the lecture hall, because quite some years ago, we started in the lecture hall. Um, I think part of the problem or the challenge with the lecture hall is the stage is not as large as this. So um, it could po pose you know, a safe, kind of a safety piece. It's cozy. Yeah. <laughs> but also, um, the yeah. stage is not wide, so it's like step off into the abyss kind of thing. But, you know, <laughs> it's, it's not, I mean, we we did it. Um, I We haven't been in there in a several years, though, so I'm not, I'm not sure where the, the actual, like, ability with sound is in there. 
Um, and Estacchio, you have some info on that, do you? Uh, on the lecture hall, just is yeah, it? In fact, we were exploring different possibilities, me and um, Bridget, our technology director, uh, as well as Maggie, who um, runs all the things in the Huzzy Theater. Like he's the one who sets up all of your microphones for the big budget hearing. So we were playing around with a bunch of different options. Um, the tricky thing in the lecture hall is going to be, uh, you know, recording equipment because it, we won't have space for this uh, setup with the Google Meets for you to be able to remote in if we were to be in that space. Um, and uh, basically, it's kind of juggling them, making sure the recordings are accessible for like so many of the parents who can't come to meetings, um, while also balancing making sure we can actually hear things here. So. Um, I know one thing which uh, I know Victoria has the amplification thing, just that it's like a personal thing, it's not perfect, but it's definitely less than four thousand dollars. So, um, we're still looking into we're probably gonna just next board meeting try something a little different, and then the board meeting after that, maybe tweak it a little bit. Like, Josh before this meeting adjusted the uh table setup, and so now we can take that and say, okay, let's what can we do from there. So, hopefully, we'll be tweaking it and by. By the time, within the next uh, like month or so, like a few uh, four meetings down the road, we'll have a pretty um, clear vision of which solution we want. On the note with the television, do, do we know how many average attendees we have um, online for board meetings? Well, they're not live streamed. It's meant for uh, like once the meeting is done, then I take the, the audio and video, um, make any touch-ups necessary, and then send it to Berwick Community Media as well as putting up on YouTube. So probably you can see the views on YouTube and whatnot. Um, but the majority of parents who check in on board meetings uh, or try to see what's going on board meetings do so through the videos. Uh, as you can see, I found a large amount of parents who have students enrolled in the school district that are doing so and Nancy's online right now. That's that's one of the biggest issues in terms of being able to, although not being able to be here, can be here. So that's the Google Meets aspect of it. Um, so it's you know it is. But my question, Victoria, can you talk? Does it make a like? Is it? Sure. Yeah, I mean, Josh said it was working. Yeah. So that's a personal device. I don't know. And those actually, I use actually when I'm teaching actually in in my in my arena at home, but. Um, the question is feedback, right? If more than one of the folks have it, it will, yes. will there be feedback? Yes. You know, when we first turned it on earlier, the feedback immediately was going off. Yeah. Um, so that will be the tricky thing is just finding something that works for this size. Uh, or... And thank you for the mic being live because that helped a ton with people that were just public input. That was very helpful to have that. Yeah. So. Um, so we're in the process and a nod to Josh because um, he's right. It's been a long time. So thank you for harassing me. <laughs> <laughs> not if I get thanks. So it is, and it's not intentional, honestly. There's just a lot going on. So it's not the, uh, it's, it's unfortunately not the first thing I'm thinking about. So we're working on it though to try to get it taken care of. Thank you. Now other? <laughs> other. Josh? A small list. So just on, on that note, um, I, I appreciate the effort going. And so I like, as for the audience that's here, has it been any different? Uh, just adjusting the tables, has it been any different for you or is it about the same? You guys are really good. But the, the lady in the mirror. Uh, yeah, Elva. 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 Right, we'll bike her up. Okay. okay. You don't chastise me from speaking well. <laughs> like you're angry. Okay. So I'm going to resurrect my teacher voice. Is that what you're saying? It's been a few years. I know you uh, have. We're older now, me. so we can't hear the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and Kelly. Uh, I just, yeah. So, like, I can hear like Warren or like over by Kathleen or on that side. But the lady that was just speaking up here about adult education, even near the microphone, couldn't hear. I mean, it's not projected towards you. It's projected to us. We heard clearly because it's yeah. projected yeah. towards us, but it's not toward them. Um, so, Can I adjust that angle? Yeah. Turn it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, so, I, you know, at first, I, I apologize to Stocky because he walked in, he saw things moved. I'm like, like I, 
I have to stop taking phone calls and conversations on this. Like I had to do, had to do something. So I'm through trying to do that. My, my biggest concern, library is a beautiful space, but it's meant to deaden sound. Like that's how it's built. It's constructed to deaden sound. And this might not be the best location, you know, an area that bounces sound like crazy is a gymnasium. Maybe we have to start meeting in a gymnasium. I, like, I think we just need to think, I, I mean, we want to make this spot work because it's beautiful, but in the same sense, if, if people are attending and they can't hear us, like that's a, that's a, that's a big issue. So I do appreciate the effort on it. I don't want to spend $4,000 on it. Um, and me personally, but, um, um, we we'll just kind of see where that goes. Um, a couple other options. I know we, we've been talking a lot about the, um, SRO school resource officer in Lebanon. And I, I'm only bringing that this up because it's certainly the discussions from, from community members, from board members, um, and people I've talked to outside of these meetings is just school safety overall. Right? It's, it's, it's not necessarily about the school resource officer or about the ones we currently have, right? We know that they, they've said response times and, you know, those of us who have, who have um, looked into school shootings know it's over in a few minutes. And so even the school resource having in Berwick can't get to one of our elementary schools in the time that it would take for a shooting. And so then, you know, the question is, oh my, are we going to put a school resource officer in every single building that we have? Because, you know, certainly... Every student in our district is important and valuable, and someone made that statement tonight, and, and I agree with that, but doing something like that would be a, basically a million-dollar expense. And, and I think we have to be honest in having that conversation and recognizing, is that the direction we're, we're going? Um, so with that note, I know what I'm about to say is probably going to, um, people may dismiss offhand, so I, I challenge you not to dismiss it offhand. To just let it set for a little bit, um, think about it and look into yourself. Uh, so there's, there's been one type of safety protocol um, in this nation um, that has not experienced uh, a school sh shooting. Um, and I'm going to publicly state what that is. It is staff concealed carry, and they actually put it on the door. Our staff is armed to protect our students in school community. Um, now, the, the, I, it's scary to like think of guns going to schools, but they make guns now where it's a handprint. So the person who it's hand printed to is the only person that can fire that. And you don't have to do a fire. You can do bean bags, which are incredibly debilitating. Um, you can do a lot of things. So I, I think it's just a matter of at least putting it out there. And rather than dismissing it, just at least consider it and look into it yourself. And obviously not going to mandate staff. It would be voluntary and anonymous and, and all those things. I think it's a lot to talk about there. But if, if we're talking truly about school safety, at least we we probably need to have that discussion publicly and we need to see um, where our constituents overall um, feel something like that. So I guess what I, what I will do in the meantime is actually put together something so that it's not offhand. It's more of this is kind of what um, is an option. I at least think we should consider as we have the discussion about school safety. Um, the third thing, the last thing on my list is I put together some numbers I wanted to share with, with everyone here. So if you can take one and pass that around. And I did bring some social media numbers as well. Thank you. Thank you again. Did I have enough? Oh, just enough. Oh, okay. So uh, let me explain, because it, it looks kind of weird if you just read it. So at the top, just an explanation um, of current standing of MSAD 60 students using an NWA individual student main through year assessment report. That is a report that parents get in our community. And the National Assessment of Edu Educational Progress, which is known as the NAEP, specifically for Maine. The NAEP has been around for decades. It's an achievement test um, to see how our students are doing across the nation. It's mandated by Congress, and, and it's done um, every year. Not every student, I want to be clear, not every student uh, in Maine takes the NAEP. They, they randomly test students across Maine, um, but they use it to compete year to year. And so I'm first going to talk about the top half of the sheet. And uh, the, a community member was willing to share their NWEA 2002 through year assessment data um, with me. I have scrubbed any identifiable information from the report, but this is what we need to see. I just basically took pictures of the two things we need to see. Um, the NWEA through. Josh, yes. could I just say, is this something that maybe we should look at? And I want to explain what it is first. Can I explain what it is and then we can go from there? 
Can we add this as a formal agenda item, though, in a future meeting? Can, that, that yeah. Okay. Be a little more prepared for it, and yeah, have yeah. a chance the to look at the rules of order. Should it be presented to Elva first, and then yes. the right? Is well, we've been talking about school data for meetings. I'm actually surprised it's not an agenda item because we've been talking about it all the time. Um, so, I mean, if you'd like for me to postpone this for two weeks. Um, sure, I, I, I guess I can. Just, um, so, put it on the agenda. Yeah. yeah. So you um, requested quite a bit of information from us regarding the scores, and in addition to like Dr. Swiger, who's doing the work to compile this, she also is doing her job. So that's partly why it hasn't been on the agenda. But you asked very specific questions. And um, we're going to have a workshop with um, Dr. Swiger to answer those questions. That may be a good time to provide have this conversation with it as well. I feel that this leads into the budget. Yeah. So I think that, that, that this is. It can happen before the budget. Okay. Absolutely. Well, that'd be something that'll be presented in front of all, it's a, a workshop that people will be able to come to as well. Workshops are always open. To, yep. Always public. Yep. It just there's a lot here. I think we need to devote. A, Time to us. There's actually not much here, but that's okay. I mean, if it looks like a lot. Discussion and everything. And plus, we have other information as well. I think to combine all of it, it's just a bigger picture to be handled. Just at a time when we've. My, my concern is that, um, and, and this is my mistake, and I will fully, I will own this mistake, right? Is that um, we have handed this to the public without an explanation of what it is. Um, so if that's the decision of the board, then that's the decision of the board. I move to table the discussion. Second. Second. All in favor? Does that include the explanation of what it is? Yes. I think it does explain it, so. You should. Yeah, explain it. I think you should. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I personally think you should just explain it. And then, but maybe the uh, the full discussion isn't probably going right. to happen tonight. I would be my second yep. because I okay. think it is data that okay. that you then, won't be able to explain. Oh, we yeah. be my motion that he can explain. Wait, you it. have to finish the yeah, motion yeah. that's up. Oh, okay, sorry. Second, <laughs> and it's, it's been and It's been voted, hasn't it? All they those. voted over there, but we didn't vote over here. I don't think. Motion we didn't vote. Did, Did you make a motion? I made the motion, so and I second second the motion. We didn't vote. And we're, we're just tabling it for another time. Is is my understanding is what the motion was for future decision. was and it was seconded. All in favor of tabling it for another time? Yes. With a quick explanation With now. With a quick explanation. The quick explanation now. You, you have to you have to amend your motion. I have to amend the motion. That's what I was going to say. To amend your amend a motion. Okay. I make a motion that we have a quick explanation tonight, and we um, work with the administrative staff to get more information based on the research that they are doing and uh, move a formal discussion to the agenda at a future date. Second. Second that. All in favor of the amended. I can do that. Okay, okay. good. So I'll be a quick explanation then. Yes. Okay. Um, so the top half is about the uh, NWEA, the range for the fourth grade from 14 to 1600. There's the math overall um, for the district and reading overall for the district. You just want to pay attention to the right-hand side where it says the average score for the district and the state is the same, essentially the same score. And that's in the middle of the 14 to 1600. Okay, so just think kind of average in the middle, right? So then you look at the NAEP and you see the NAEP results um, from across Maine. And the basic conclusion is if our data, NWA data, is the same as the state's, my question is, is our achievement data the same as the state? Questions, comments? Okay. Uh, other. Other. Um, I'd just like to make a mention, a note that Teacher of the Year Awards, nominations for teachers, um, is open now. And um, we have some excellent educators in our district. And uh, it would behoove us, I think, to take a look at our staff and uh, see if there are appropriate candidates to bring forward as nominees. I did post this information on the North Berwick community Facebook page, as well as my own uh, page. So if you'd like that information, I can forward it to you. You can just cut and paste it yourself for Lebanon and Berwick. 
I would love it if you just sent it to me and I'll put it up on this. Okay, good. Thank you. In response to um, guns potentially being in schools, I think I don't care what any of us say if we don't have teachers who are on board with this. Like we can talk to liberal in the face, like it's not going to get anywhere. So I would love to, through you guys collaboratively or through all of us, um, put together a comprehensive survey that we send out to staff before we waste a whole lot of energy on this discussion. Because if we don't have buy-in from a percentage of staff, like, well, there's also the state law that needs to be yeah, state law yeah. unions. So I guess. Before we get to state fire, allow that, but they're but Maine is not one of them currently. Okay. So there's there's a, yeah. a bigger piece of the pie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. but thank you. Uh, any other? Um, I have one quick yeah. clarifying. Um, it's a question, but really just for you guys to answer. We went over the SRO and how we we're going to get. I believe it's a grant. Um, to go with it. So. Um, a gentleman got up during the um, public input and was saying we need to consider the budget, but with that grant, maybe we need to explain that again really very very quickly, if you guys could just go over that so you know that how many years the grant will be kicking in and how it works with the towns. You said it would be, Lebanon would kick in their portion of part of that as well. It wouldn't just be, it wouldn't be North Berwick and Berwick, it would be Lebanon kicking in their share. I just want, can you guys explain that a little bit? So the grant is a three year grant. So it runs for three years that they would pay a percentage of the. So it's for um, the sheriff's department. Okay. So they get the grant and then they pay a certain percentage. I would say it's probably less, just about 47% ish like that um, for the, for the officer. Um, the district is carrying the other part of that currently as it looks it's the way that the um the sros are in the other two towns it's we pay for a, one of the officers from the each of the towns because lebanon does not have a police force and they don't have a contracted police officer or sheriff or deputy depending on the thing um it's kind of like we're comparing apples and oranges instead of like apples to apples for like Berwick and, and North Berwick, it's pretty clear, you know, it's between the district and the towns. In the Lebanon city, currently as it stands, the grant would pay a portion and the district would pay a portion. Mm -hmm. So that's clear. Um, I'm not gonna give you exact numbers because I, I don't wanna misquote myself, but I think there's a piece of that. Um, we do have conversation flowing with Lebanon so I can respond to that piece of it um, about um, contracting an officer for Lebanon themselves. Um, so Sheriff King reached out to me actually afterwards and because um, Paul Philbrook had talked about getting together and talking about this. Um, whether or not it goes anywhere, I'm not sure. So I'm going to follow up with Sheriff King actually tomorrow because he had reached out to me and said, hey, give me a call. And we've had some conversation. So I'm going to try to... I want to see where, where that takes us. I don't know. So you'll be following up on that as well with yeah. the board as well. Okay. Yes. Yep. So all that information will be there. But um, yeah, it is, it's not exactly the same as what our other two towns are doing with us right now. Okay. So yeah. But it is how things got started. That's a clarification question. I was under the impression at the last meeting that um, for North Fork and Burke, the district pays for like nine months of the police officer and the towns pay the other three, the three months. Yeah. That's, that's the current. Pretty much. Yep. That's okay. kind of how it plays out. Um, we we pay for the school year part of it. They pay for the other parts of it. Yep. And that's what we're looking at for Lebanon, possibly. That would be the same. Yeah. Because we won't be contracting with them for the summer school piece of it. Probably not. Oops. Thank you very much. Appreciate You're welcome. That. Sure. Any more other? Uh, public input. I'm sorry. I find myself saying this, but I applaud you guys for reaching out to the local uh, scops, the uh, Brett Whitney and Huzzies and everything else, because there is a need for the school to take and try start training people for the future. We are drastically running out of kids that are skilled to do any skilled labor job. 
I noticed using the men's room tonight, you got a urinal down. Well, we had a, a shop tucked here that the kids could learn plumbing. You could probably fix that urinal cheaper than what you would pay a plumber to come in and fix it. Just by teaching the kid how to do it. Okay. Uh, I applaud you that. Mark Roulard and I were exploring the idea of going to Huzzies and going and getting a work program for the teens during the summer so they can learn a skill. Maybe you can address that when you have your breakfast. Uh, we still need to look at having a separate room for the special needs kids. That we and a teacher uh, take take over teaching them because uh, there's a lot of them that are being left out. And I know we have vacant rooms over in uh, Burrow uh, that could be used for a special needs room. And there's probably empty rooms here that could be used for a special needs room. That way the kids won't disturb the other kids that really want to excel and want to learn. But I do applaud you for reaching out to the local schools. I, I want to tell you just one incident I ran into from students that worked at Subway from the school system. We put in an order for a party platter. Uh, the manager called, said, your party platter will be ready at five o'clock. We got in there, there was three students in there running the show. And they said, your order's over here on the stand. It's in a bag. That's not a party platter. They didn't know what they were reading on the menu. They didn't know how to do a party platter. So maybe I didn't put a subway too. Bring them in and have them train their people. But thank you for reaching out. Thank you. I never thought I'd say that. <laughs> Other public input? It's going to be in the minutes, Mr. Cahoon. So it'll be forever seen. <laughs> uh, good evening, Mark Rulock from North Park. Um, I never thought of Mr. Tabor. I think that was a great idea. We live in Maine. A lot of us hunt and carry guns. Most of our families have guns. Um, I think teachers carrying guns would, um, would benefit the school. The other thing is a uh, question. Uh, when the students arrive, do they come in one entrance? Okay. Um, have you reached out to North Berwick? And uh, they do have a dog, uh, maybe in the mornings or afternoon, just periodically showing up as students are leaving or coming in. Uh, even Berg, uh officer may do the same. Um, that's just my thoughts, but thank you, Josh. That was a, a good mention. Other public input? Mike Parker again. Uh, I want to thank Josh Pugh for his comments and just to start a discussion, you know, larger. And we actually had that discussion uh, right after Sandy Hook with some things and some other ideas and actually, you know, full disclosure, I'm the chief VMS here in town in North Berwick. And we sponsored a whole class and invited teachers and administrators and everybody just to look for behavioral signs as well. It wasn't really hands on stuff, but it was a good full day of, uh, you know, from an expert that came in on things to, to look at, uh, you know, different types of behaviors and things like that. Um, so some of that stuff can be done again as well, especially as new teachers are coming in, new people in, and really getting everybody. I know the Alice training that gets put on is, is great training. Um, I've been through similar training myself, um, and they do a great job with that. And I wanted to really just kind of reiterate my comments, and it's not, again, it's not that I'm not for an SRO, but I truly believe that this conversation over the district really putting forth the burden for Lebanon Elementary School is really due to the fact that Lebanon does not have a police department or nor does the town vote to have a contract deputy to have that. Because I would caution against that. If, 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 if we go as a school district to provide that and listening to Sheriff's King comments to come to an upfront cost, it's basically like the school district is contracting a deputy. It comes with 
the cruiser. It comes with all of the upfront costs as well. But then that's the only police officer that's in Lebanon. I would really find it hard to believe that, you know, you can say that officer is not going to leave. He's going to be assigned to the school. But if something happens that's major, that's four blocks up the street, that's the only police officer. And Lebanon already has an issue where response time is 20, 30 minutes long. That that officer isn't going to leave. And the school district is then funding that police coverage. Um, I wouldn't want to be the officer that something happened that knowing that somebody's coming 20 minutes away and then something happens afterwards and says, well, there was a police officer that was that could have responded to another incident, but he wasn't allowed to leave the school. So that's really where the budgetary decision to do that. And I understand the formula that we have in North Berwick and Berwick and, and how we support that. But again, we have other patrol officers that are patrolling. I know that the police department goes to the elementary school. I know that they read to the kids. We do with the ambulance. We know that they go to the herd school. We know that they respond to stuff. The same thing happens in Berwick. You know, I mean, my wife used to work at the Knowlton school. She doesn't anymore. But I said, how much was Officer Fogg at the Knowlton school? Well, you know, only when it was needed or whatever, but other officers, would come if they needed that presence. So that's really the crust of it. And again, school safety is very important. It is, but I really feel we would not have this conversation as big as it is if Lebanon had a police department. So the onus is really on the Lebanon residents too to band together for what they need before we saddle all three towns with the budgetary thing for one school in one town that doesn't provide that essential service. So thank you. Other public input? Hello, my name is Brett Little. I'm in Park Berwick. I wasn't expecting to speak at all today, but it's hearing the talk about budgetary discussions and such, especially with uh, uh, skilled labor coming out of the high school and such, and the, the schools here. I, I think it's important to focus on a lot of what's already been talked about with skilled labor. But beyond that, I want to just throw what was we talked about budget and such coming forward. Uh, high tech skilled labor coming out of our school district seems kind of um, embarrassingly low at the moment, where we do not have a computer science teacher at the North Berwick High or North Berwick Noble High School. Um, I know that there's a number of reasons that's the case, but as we start talking about future budgetary and such, it's it's just a and they talk because I'm part of that community of more the high tech community talking about the, the students and the, the opportunities we have here. Uh, I think it should be part of the discussion for uh, the future budget that somehow we make sure that, that children have the opportunity to be a part of also more high tech uh, of the future. Otherwise, I think our, our kids are going to get a little bit left behind with a lot of what other school districts and other areas are doing. Um, and I think probably there's already a discussion about it, but just uh, as a as a member of the community voice, it's my concern finding out that there is no zero computer science teacher at all at North Berwick High School, not elementary school, middle school at the high school um, is kind of disappointing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Other public input? If not, then item 10 is executive session. I believe you have the number that sure. you're going to share with so us as to what that is. We'll need a motion to go into executive session. Uh, we're not coming, we don't have any business after that. Um, so it's duties of officials, appointees, employees. It's MRSA 4056-A. Somebody could make a motion for Some, that. So. Some of it's been made. Seconded. Second. Second. All in favor? Thank you. All right. Okay. Okay. 